Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Dr. Psych Mom Show. I'm just going to do my subscriber encouragement at the beginning here and tell you to please subscribe so you could hear all my couples you meet in counseling um, series that I'm going to be putting out there as well as the attachment theory one that's super important if you want to understand some of my other podcasts on relationships and more and also do please join my Facebook group which is separate that you don't get the podcast for uh, for free for joining the Facebook group but it has about like 70 something um, people in there who like to talk about relationships parenting and more and you get more engagement with me uh, and separate content I don't mean podcasts I just mean separate content like posts and engagement and that kind of thing um, about relationships, parenting, etc. So for today's episode, we're talking about how you can really assess if your partner is compatible with you by looking at their best self. And frequently, their best self is going to be with their kids. So what do I mean? So obviously, a lot of men want more physical affection. So how do you know if you're ever going to be satisfied in that domain or or not? Like, so for example, there's many women who sex drive plummets in monogamy, but they still have sex, you know, like they still do have sex, especially, you know, when they're not like just gave birth or breastfeeding or something or in menopause for the first couple years or whatever of that. I mean, big hormonal changes screw with you, but like many people still do have sex, right? And how do you know if your wife is going to be one of those people? Um, And of course, sex isn't just sex, it's physical touch and affection. So why don't you look at whether she gives physical affection anywhere? Well, obviously not talking about sex with your children. I'm talking about physical affection, though. It's so funny because, like, so many guys, I'll be like, oh, does your wife ever hug and kiss you? They're like, no, never. I'm like, does she hug and kiss the kids? They're like, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, this doesn't sound so enthusiastic. And they're like, well, I mean, yeah, I guess. I mean, like, I think she, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, she used to. I mean, kids are like 10, you know, <laughs> like, it's not like they're like, you know, uh, 30. And it's like, then they're like, oh, shit, like, no. And did her parents hug her? Are they a huggy family? No. Oh, well, I mean, you know, like, what could she do? Like, she's not even hugging the damn children. Like, what do you think your odds are of her being very physically affectionate with you moving forward? Like, none. I mean, for real. Like, I mean, I guess she could learn to have sex. It's so interesting because the when I work with couples, the physical affection piece is actually harder for many women than sex because sex, they can... Um, they they can have an orgasm. They train themselves basically to to have a quick sexual encounter, but they cannot train themselves to go over and hug and kiss the guy because they just do not have that need. And when you don't have that need or that desire, it can frequently just feel like weird, awkward, and even gross. And and in a worse case, it can feel like actually traumatizing, scary, or anger inducing as I talked about in a prior podcast and that usually speaks to some sort of sexual trauma history but in in a in a regular scenario she just feels it's like gross and weird you know like just something that she has no desire to ever do so a lot of guys have like marriages with no kissing at all for example because while she could like you know have sex with you once a week or so she can't kiss you like ever because she's just not a physical touch person. And if you look at her with the kids, she loves the kids so much. But what does she do? She gets their dance recital clothes in order and she packs their lunch and she signs them up for summer camp and she does all their forms. Oopsie, what does it look like? It looks like she's an acts of service person. That's what she does. And if you look at what she does for you, that's the same thing. She does acts of service and she's probably been baking you cupcakes since when you were dating but she's never really liked to touch. So if you are going to forever be sad that she doesn't like to touch and keep trying to get her to be something she's not, you may really want to evaluate an individual work why you keep barking up the wrong tree here and also what led you to ignore the red flags at the beginning that she always kind of hated touch, which so many people just ignore this. I talked about this in my Zoom with dad starting over, but like most of the men I talk to, like there's this myth that like the honeymoon stage is so different. Like it's different. Like I, I'm the first to say it's different. The woman is drunk on new love hormones, but, but, but it's not 
so um like discontinuous with the rest of how she acts it's just like it's like her in in the honeymoon phase it's like her now but it was squared you know it's not like her now like plus four thousand like it just doesn't go like that it's like you had sex more but still probably not enough or not enough if you had been being honest with yourself so what can this look like for things that women often struggle with more frequently um emotionality so your husband, it's like, so you'll tell yourself, oh, he loves the kids so much. He acts like so much different with the kids. I wish that he acted with the kids as, emo- uh, with me as emotional as he does with the kids. Okay, cool. Let's look at how he acts with the kids. Does he really deeply inquire as to their inner world? Fuck no, he doesn't. He comes in and says, oh, hey, buddy. And he, he does smile, certainly probably more at the, you know, five-year-old that doesn't act critical than at you who does act critical. But he's not deeply asking in the way that you, probably if somebody is uh, dissatisfied in this domain, they're a highly sensitive person. So the mother who's highly sensitive is like laying with her kid in the bed at night saying, oh, honey, what was your favorite part of today? Oh, did that make you feel this way or that way? And I used to feel this way and that way. Do you think your husband's doing that with anyone when he can't do it with you? He's not, and not even with the kids that he loves more than his life. He would run into a burning building for the kids, but he's not asking them about their feelings either. And when you try to finally see this and acknowledge it, you could be like, wow, like he just can't do that. He can't even do it in a best case scenario where he loves the kids so much and he has no resentment or bitterness or marital conflict at all. And there's no... uh, thing that I have where I won't sleep with him enough so maybe he's mad at me and maybe that's why he's doing it no he just doesn't do it you know or people that are like why doesn't my husband like remember our special days and uh you know act thoughtful this and that because the man's ADHD and if you look at him with the kids he doesn't remember shit about them either and if you didn't tell him when their birthday was he probably wouldn't know either so for most people, the vast majority of my listeners have children, are, are married and have children. And if you really want a good control group, do not think about how he used to act in the honeymoon phase when he, in fact, probably was hyper-focused or, you know, really just drunk on new love and was acting like, still not discontinuous, but a somewhat amplified version of his regular self or her regular self. Look how they act at this age with the children who they love so much, probably in many cases of marital dysfunction, they love them more than they love you. So therefore, how would how how could they, if they can't even do something with the children, how are they going to do it with you? So this can lead to two different sorts of um conclusions neither of which they're not mutually exclusive you know they they, you can have both first is acceptance like there could be a real epiphany like oh my god my husband does love my daughter he loves her so much that she's really daddy's girl and you know what he didn't even remember that she was starting summer camp next week and he didn't remember to ask about whether like she still had poison ivy and you know what I guess he just doesn't remember shit you know like that would be like a really good epiphany that could make you not feel like hatred and dislike toward you know your husband secondly and and so this is called acceptance then there can also be like a great reckoning you can say is this okay with me and is this something that I want for my life and if it's not and if I really really in either case I deep I cannot be with a man who forgets everything constantly or I cannot be with a man who has no emotionality or I cannot be a woman that with a woman who doesn't enjoy hugs and kisses well then you got some real work to do to consider whether you should continue your relationship because maybe you should not continue your relationship if you cannot get to a place of acceptance now there also of course can be change and you can exhort your partner to come to couples counseling and see on the margins of their existing personality because they cannot change their existing personality what can they change so this is like what couples counseling can be useful for but if if the couples do not have basic respect for one another and the idea that yes they each do start out with an individual personality that probably cannot be changed that much then you're going to be paying a lot more money because then we have to 
teach you that as couples counselors. Basically, oh, uh, they have a personality and their personality can only really be changed on the margin. So if a woman is a zero right now on physical touch, maybe I'm going to get her to a two or a three, but she's not going to be a seven or an eight. And if your entire life is going to be destroyed by not being with a woman who comes over to cuddle you and hug and kiss you, then you got to get out now before you make this marriage into a battlefield and you both completely hate each other and there's no amicable co-parenting. So does that happen in all situations? No, because honestly, many people, if they love their spouse, they're real happy with like a two-point change on a scale. And that two-point change can best be accomplished if the person starts out feeling like you don't hate their existing personality and that you actually feel like kind of an idiot yourself for ever thinking that they were completely different or could be completely different because really they can't. So this um, kind of frame of interrogating deeply how do they act with the child. And now if you've got a bunch of kids and your um, spouse has a favorite, pick the favorite, right? So like don't like, you know, like really give like an apt comparison. How do they act at their true best with their favorite child? The one who really they don't have any sort of headbutting with. So that's probably as good as they could act with you. So if your wife has cannot stand physical touch with you, because there's been so much animosity over the years, but your son who walks on water, she does give hugs and kisses to, well, then she probably doesn't hate hugs and kisses all that much. Probably you and her are just embroiled in an endless battle. But does she, by the way, now you can also use your comparison points. Does she give hugs and kisses as much as you see your kid's Uh, friends mothers do so when you guys were at pickup and your kids was a you know your kids friends moms and dads were at pickup did your wife give as many hugs and kisses as other mommies did at pickup if not and if you know that she's like deeply devoted to your kid, then she just really isn't a toucher. I mean, this is her best case scenario and she can't even do it now, you know? So this can help you be like, wow, no shit. Like she really, it's not me. It's just like, I mean, I'm making things worse by, of course, like being mad at her about it all the time. But deeply, this just isn't her. And understanding like what your partner is and isn't can really, really be useful and even transformative in in the relationship. Obviously, you, you stop banging your head against the wall. It's like when a partner gets a diagnosis. So if you've listened to my ADHD podcast, when a partner gets an ADHD diagnosis, it can be like so illuminating for for the spouse. The spouse is like, holy shit, they didn't mean to be an asshole. They were in like passive aggressively forgetting shit. They can't remember anything. Like they really can. Oh my god. And that could be something you live with or something you can't live with. And of course, there's other less um endearing, uh, you know, symptoms of ADHD than the absent-minded professorness of it. There's also being impulsive and being oppositional, and those are not so cute, but not that the forgetting is cute, but you see my point, even less cute. (laughs) Um, And if you realize that this is just how the person is and they're this way with anybody, even in their best case scenario of having unconditional love for your child, then, wow, you know, then it can really open your eyes to saying something like, I put my head in the sand about stuff like this during the courtship. I was also young. I'm not going to hate myself over it, but I could have noticed some more things. And quite honestly, even in their best case scenario, they don't act so great in these dimensions. And therefore, I'm going to try to accept them for who they are, stop being so constantly mad and bitter, and then we're going to, in couples counseling, maybe work on how both of us can change within the constraints of our given personalities, how we can each be a best case in this marriage. You know, and you could refer back to my podcast, like, would your spouse act so act the same with everybody else? Well, they wouldn't. If you're nicer to them, they're going to be more pushing the boundaries of what they can transform into than if you're a dick, right? This is just commonsensical. Although nothing is really commonsensical within relationships because people are so personally invested that they sometimes forget even common sense. So, um, 
anyhow, if this was interesting to you, use it as like uh, a prompt for further introspection. Some people really like writing, so it's generally not the ones who like listening to podcasts, though. <laughs> the ones who like writing generally like reading my post. But uh, if you are that um, person who who likes both, then a lot of these podcast topics, like if I give you something to think about and you're not in therapy with me, um, you, what you can do is you can like journal about it. You can really use it as a jumping off point to write about it. So here you could write something like, how does my spouse act with our kid and what's the same and what's different? And what have I learned about his personality or her personality and my expectations from that? That would be like like really worth a few therapy sessions, honestly, and it's for free. So I uh, hope you found this useful and I will talk to everybody soon. Remember to subscribe if I am adding value to your life. And if you are a subscriber and you have special topics that you would like to be requested, then let me know because I do like doing that. Then I don't have to just wing it. Although I also can wing it. (laughs) I have no problem with winging it either. And have a great day, everybody.